As Pakistan commemorated the anniversary of the May 9th riots, Chief of Army Staff General Asim Munir made a resolute declaration, ruling out any compromise with the orchestrators of the violent upheaval. Political figures echoed this sentiment, denouncing the events and criticizing the PTI. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan's arrest last year catalyzed widespread violence, prompting a severe crackdown on his party. Thousands were detained, with many still facing legal proceedings. In a statement, Chief of Army Staff Munir condemned the orchestrated violence, vowing accountability for those involved. He praised the troops' dedication and resilience against digital misinformation campaigns. The Army Chief inaugurated the Jinnah Library in Lahore. The military emphasized the importance of bringing the culprits to justice, reaffirming commitment to national sovereignty. Imran Khan, speaking after court proceedings, declined to apologize for the riots, citing his detention during the events. Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif labeled the riots an attempt to undermine democracy and establish dictatorship, vowing unity against such threats. In Islamabad, Information Minister Ataullah Tarar announced a resolution condemning the violence, highlighting the government's stance. The Balochistan Assembly adopted a resolution condemning the riots and urging strict action against those involved. Chief ministers and politicians across parties condemned the riots, emphasizing unity and justice. Efforts to commemorate the day include gatherings, prayers, and condemnations of the violence, while authorities have imposed restrictions to maintain order. Yesterday, Imran Khan, speaking after court proceedings, declined to apologize for the riots, citing his detention during the events. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's election campaign spans the nation, but notably excludes Indian illegally occupied Kashmir from his party's contest for the first time since 1996. Instead, local parties vie for the region's three seats, aligning against the BJP. Analysts suggest the BJP's absence may contradict Modi's narrative of the illegally occupied territory's peaceful integration post its semi-autonomous status revocation in 2019. Despite Modi's claims of normalcy and development, discontent simmers in the heavily militarized region. The government's decision to redraw electoral boundaries stirs controversy with accusations of gerrymandering. The BJP's strategic decision to forego the illegally occupied territory's election sparks speculation, leaving questions about the region's true sentiments and BJP's stance. In Gaza, southern city of Rafah, a Hamas official accuses Israel of impeding ceasefire talks by conducting military operations and seizing the border crossing with Egypt. Despite this, Hamas said it remains committed to the proposed ceasefire. Hamas also announced the departure of its delegation from Cairo ceasefire talks, en route to Doha, Qatar, amid Israel's actions in Rafah. Meanwhile, Israeli Premier Benjamin Netanyahu sends a message, possibly to Biden, by posting a video commemorating the Holocaust. In other news, Turkish Trade Minister Omar Bolad dismisses Israeli claims of East trade bans with Israel, affirming that the ban remains until a permanent Gaza ceasefire and humanitarian aid flow are secured. Palestinian civil defense teams uncover 49 bodies from a mass grave at Gaza City's Al-Shifa Hospital, marking the seventh such discovery during the conflict. The World Health Organization calls for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, highlighting the dire situation, including severe malnutrition and dehydration among children like seven-year-old Jana. Scott Paul from Oxfam America suggested that while a maritime aid corridor set up by the U.S. could help, it may not fully address Gaza's humanitarian crisis. At least 34,904 people have been killed and 78,514 wounded in Israeli attacks on Gaza since October 7th.